And today I'm going to be going over the top five things that I wish I would have known before I ran my first ultra. Number five, they're going to suck. Running for 10 plus hours sucks. It's not fun. It hurts. It is a little fun, but it hurts. And those of you who venture out into the ultra territory, running for 10 hours plus is not going to be a ton of fun. In the physical pain and the stuff going on in your body, that's not going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, all of this is just up in the air. It depends on how much you train, how well you, you hydrate, and do all of these things throughout the race. That's really going to depend on how, how good your race is. But running that far, it's not going to be a ton of fun. It's kind of like having a baby, even though I've never had or physically had a baby, but I've been in the room where my wife has had them. So you go through the stressful period of your life. What was I doing? I wasn't doing a lot. My wife was growing the baby and her. And uh, you go through all of that and all that stress and all that work and being scared and all the things that you have to do. And then this one day comes and it's stressful and beautiful and it hurts and there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears involved. Pain, not so much for me, but for my wife. At the end of all of this stress and all of these things, there's this beautiful baby that you love so much and it makes it all worth it you forget about all the other stuff because if everyone concentrated on all the nonsense that you go through to have a baby we'd all have like one child or none that's what i can relate ultra running to having children if you can do that uh, it's beautiful it's hard but when it's all over with you'll want to do it again i guess that's how it works i'm not sure number four nutrition Nutrition. Nutrition does matter. I know that this matters because I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. I read about it. I had a plan. I knew how much I was going to eat. I had my gels packed down with gels, running and, and doing what I was supposed to in my first ultra, and I absolutely followed none of it. Well, some of it. I ate some gels, but that's pretty much the only thing that I did. I filled up with Oreo cookies and potato chips and soda. Things that I've never, ever eaten on any run ever before. And all of a sudden, as soon as I get into this race, I get a little stressed and tired and hungry. And I start to go into a little caloric deficit. And I just start shoving all the food in my mouth. And I didn't stick with my uh, diet plan. And that's happened a couple times. So nutrition matters. And I've had periods where had I actually stuck to with what I wanted to do, I probably would have fared much, much better. Not that it was horrible, but... I'm talking about trying to have the best race you possibly can. And I know that every time I've done it, I've not had the best race I possibly can. So these are things that I haven't have to remind myself every single time. Number three, running with people is much better than running by yourself. I know this because I've had people to pace me. I run alone all of the time. I rarely have ever run with people in training. And I don't know why that is. I guess it just depends. When I run, and I don't have a lot of running friends who want to go run as far as I do, or as long as I do. So, my options are kind of limited. But I was very fortunate to have great, great people to pace me. And not only did they just, were they there just for moral support, I finished the races because of them. Seriously question whether or not I would have finished races sometimes because of the suck that just happens, a hurt locker you get into. And to have somebody there to help just keep your mind off of the things that you're going through and think for you a little bit, they help. I mean, pacers are invaluable. I mean, you're going to need to have one. Not everyone needs them. And, and it, of course, everyone's different. And I've been through some pretty hard times in races and 100% absolutely, completely happy that I had someone there to help me get through it, to help push me, to keep me from walking when I wanted to walk, which was pretty much all of the time. And your crew members. The crew members... Anybody who's ever run any race, having people there to cheer you on that you know that you're going to see them at the next aid station, they're the reason that I would even go to the next aid station a lot of the time. So I can, and, I, and we all know that this is, they're important. We all know that the people that help us are important. And it's not until you get into the really deep, dark place when you're out there running, do you really understand how much those people mean to you when you're going to the next aid station. So just keep that in mind. You know they're important. We all understand that. But you'll really understand that once you get out there. Number two, dehydration. Not only dehydration, but in keeping, 
keeping your electrolytes in, in balance, getting in your sodium and potassium and all of that stuff. It may not seem like something you can worry about, especially if you've, you've come from the lower races, you're just out there and you're taking in like one gel and some water. And sometimes most of us, I go out and I don't take anything in other than water for 13 to 15 miles. You do that in an ultra, you're going to be in a hurt locker. You need to start monitoring that stuff early. You need to take electrolyte pills or some sort of drink to replace that. You need to find out what works for you because we're all different. We're all an experiment of one. So I can't tell you what I do because it won't work for you. Well, it could work, but just by chance. You need to figure out what works for you in training. That's with your nutrition. You need to find out the amount of calories you burn, how many you need to take in, and the amount of water that you expel, and how much you need to take in for running for you. So a lot of bad things can happen if you let your electrolytes and water get out of whack from heart issues to slowing down your pace um, to stomach problems to bathroom problems to pretty much shutting your race down and having to do not finish. DNF for those of you who don't know what that is. I haven't had to do that yet but you really have to pay attention to that stuff. You can't just let it go. Especially for most of us who are not elites and even the elites. The elites will do this to themselves too but Many of us are not complete beasts that can go out and just tough through something like that. You really have to watch that stuff because it will end your day, and that's not fun. Nobody wants to go sign up for a 50 or 100 mile race and and have to drop out because you did something dumb like I feel great and I'm just going to run for the first four, five, six, seven hours without taking any sodium in or electrolytes and not monitor your hydration. So hydration, you need to keep on top of it. You need to make sure you're getting your sodium, nutrition. All that stuff. Get it all squared away and you won't have anything to worry about when it comes to that. Number one, research. Research the course. Go out there to Google and search on the course. Look for videos on YouTube because I know a lot of us out there have recorded the races. You can look at the terrain then. Pictures, race reports. Anything you can find on the race and the terrain. The actual terrain. It's one thing to know that, hey, this is kind of a hilly course and I should probably run some hills. That might work and you might be fit enough to just pull that off. One of the problems was in my first race, I knew that the race was a double marathon at Belmonte. You know, we, I knew it would be hilly. It's hilly around here. I really underestimated the amount of hills, the climbs. So when you see something that says a 1,200 foot climb, that's fine. 1,200 foot, that's, I can handle that. Yeah, but when it's straight up and it's within a half a mile, climbing that is going to be tough if you have not trained for it. That's Stairmaster stuff right there. And I was fine for the first couple mountain climbs, but after 10 hours and having to climb back up the final climb, it was almost impossible. It almost ended my race because I was not prepared for that. I was prepared to run the distance, but I was not prepared to do the climbing that I was going to have to do. So you really need to look into that. You really need to just study everything you can and really try your best to train for it. Because, I mean, maybe some of you don't have any hills where you are. Get on a Stairmaster. Climb, 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 climb. Get on there and do as much as you can to get your lower body, your abs, your glutes, your thighs, your hamstrings, everything ready for the climb you're going to have. Now, I know there's a lot of people who've listed things out there that they think are a lot more important. I'm not saying these are the all-encompassing list of things that are important. I'm just telling you, these are the things that I wish I would have known and really, really, really paid attention to. These are the things I'm going to have to pay attention to every single race that I go into. Because these are the things that can end your race. And you don't want to do that. We don't want to end our race. You want to have a good time as much as you can. So until next time, guys, get out there, get running, get moving. I'll see you next time.